Good morning. Welcome Good morning. to Ontario. Um, we're gonna. I'm going to just take a minute and a half and say good morning, and then I'm going to... Gary, did you have a couple things you wanted to talk about before we before we introduce John? Are you kidding with you up there? You're well, at, at a minimum, I want to introduce Gary Fullington. If you guys have not met Gary, Gary um, in the back is our business consultant, Cobalt Banker Corporate. Uh, I've known Gary for a couple of years now, but he's only actually been um, assigned to our group for a couple, couple three months or so. Um, great guy. He's kind of, you know, I don't know if he sees himself this way, but he's kind of my coach. So he calls me and whips me into shape and says, hey, let's do this and let's do that. And, and what are you doing and why are you doing that and why are you doing it that way? So I'm thankful for Gary. He's actually responsible to put this on. Um, he had sent us uh, an email request a month or two ago and said, hey, let's do this. By the way, this is John, by the way. It's John Moore. He's also a Cobalt Banker corporate. He's going to be our presenter this morning. morning. Hi, John. Good morning. Um, and I'm, I'll relinquish the floor to John here in a minute. But Gary said, hey, let's let's do this um, event. And I think initially we were talking about just doing it in Covina. I don't remember the genesis as to why it was Covina. And I said, hey, you know what? Let's um, do a little more central location, see if we can get everybody from the five corners of our world to come on down to Ontario and see what we're doing. Um, so, the, the, so again, I want to thank Gary for reaching out to us and, and putting this on. I love these type of things because I don't have to do anything. I we just kind of show up and book a room and, and I get to sit back and relax and, and let these guys go to work. John's the expert. Um, and hey, well, yeah, John's the expert. I will, I'll just have just this brief commentary on the topic and quite honestly today's attendance. Um, not that I'm surprised. We've got 20 so, or so people. Maybe we'll end up with another 15 or so before we, um, you know, before we get too deep into the presentation. But the topic is on video. Um, John's got a whole presentation which I have never seen, so I, I, I can't really comment on it. Other than we have been talking about video for years, and the sad truth for most of our five offices. If I'm being honest, there's probably less than five agents out of 200 that have really truly embraced video. Not that we don't have more that have done a video or maybe they've got something on their website, um, but then they haven't updated it, they haven't done anything with it, and it's got kind of static. And I'm guilty of that. I'm guilty of that. Some of the stuff that we have a lot of video here, and my intention was, hey, let's shoot a video, and then let's update it and refresh it. So um, I will once again, we refresh our call and our plea to everybody in this business. Video is where it's at. And if, if you haven't embraced it yet, then hopefully when, when, when John's done, he'll make it so easy for us. Well, that's the goal. Yeah. Um, so, but the easy part is one thing. So, hope, again, I haven't seen the presentation, but I, I think part of what we're going to say is, hey, come on, guys, this is not complicated. It's easy to do this. The secondary part is just us getting over our, our just our fear of, of standing in front of the video, standing in front of the camera, getting the words right and all the rest of that. So at any rate, we've got a few more guys that have rolled in here, so that, this is good. So at any rate, I'm going to turn the floor over to John, and um, thanks everybody for coming, and John Murray with Cobalt Baker. All right, great. Thank you very much. Well, don't clap yet. You haven't been through the course. So. Uh, all right, so obviously we're here to talk about video. Uh, as, um, as Lance had mentioned, you know, we've been talking about video as, as a company now for a couple of years. It started with us uh, working with YouTube to create our own channel, our Coldwell Banker channel uh, on um, YouTube. It's called On Location. How many of you have seen it or are familiar with it? Okay, we've got some educating to do. Um, we created this channel specifically to, to give a venue to, to show listing videos, agent videos, community videos. And the way we set it up is uh, we set it up as a map where the listing videos would show on as icons on the map. You could look for properties based on a search of uh, uh, <clears throat> beds, baths, price, just like you would for a normal listing. And we did this uh, knowing that over the coming years, uh, video was really going to be taking off uh, more and more. And we, like we do with a lot of our technology, look to see what we can do to be ahead of the competition, to be better than them, and give you the opportunity you know, to, to be a part of that. Now, we've had some real challenges, though, with video, and that's been all around the adoption. 
How many of you have uh, taken a video or have uh, created any video so far? All right, so just a, a couple. Okay. The intent of this program is to walk you through the steps of creating a video. And hopefully by the end of it, you know, give you the sense that this is something that you can do. It's really not that difficult. We can break it down. And I will show you my entire PowerPoint. This is it. Okay, we're going to talk about taking the video, then we're going to talk about editing the video, and we're not going to talk about it, we're going to sit down and go through it and go through the steps for editing your video, and then finally uploading it. The rest of this is all going to be live and actually demonstrating it, not just showing you slides up on the screen. Now, <clears throat> the best case scenario would be each of you having a computer in front of you and you know going through the steps. Um, but that's an all-day class, and we don't have all day, and I know you don't. Um, but ultimately, if, if we could get you to go even to your own home tonight and just take a few short scenes just to go through the process and come back to your you know, computer and put it together, all right, that would be a major accomplishment. Then you would get that aha moment that, wow, this really isn't that hard. We can do this. And that's what we're looking to do here. All right. <clears throat> so YouTube, the land of video. NAR sees video as being uh, the way to market a home for the future. They see within the next two to three years that video will have the same weight as photographs do now. The challenge is with our industry not being able to adopt it. One of the recent stats that we have is that 78% of sellers would prefer to work with an agent that offers video. Only 12% of our industry even has a channel or is using video currently. There's a huge, huge gap. And the same goes for your competition too, but they're really starting to pick up on it as well. So you can either you know, move ahead and have video as part of your arsenal, or you can wait till everyone else is doing it and then you have to catch up. And then, you know, by then it becomes a requirement because if you're not doing it, everyone else is, uh, you've lost the advantage. So over these last couple of years, we found that there's some real hang-ups when it comes to an agent taking a video, or creating a video, or editing a video. And the two major ones are, I don't want to be in the video. I hate the sound of my own voice. I'm not comfortable being on the camera. So I'm really not comfortable you know, doing a video. How many of you would that apply to? All right, so a good percentage. The other major hang-up was the thought of taking a video and then trying to edit it and then upload it seems like it would be such an enormous use of my time. It would be such a big learning curve. I just don't have the skills yet to do it and I don't have the time to put towards creating videos. How many would that apply to? Okay, so I'm going to just say something here a little bit tongue in cheek. But for those of you that are afraid to be on video, I'm going to ask you how many buyers have you taken to a property in your career? Hundreds? Thousands. Thousands? Okay. How many of them at the end of your presentation told you that they didn't like the sound of your voice or your butt was too big or, you know, any other <laughs> challenge that you thought about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Don't ask that to Diane. <laughs> so, all right, it, it's easy for me to stand up here and joke about it, but the fear is real. I'm not very comfortable with it either, but I have to. So I'll tell you what you know, some agents have done, and we'll go through tips and techniques and ways to get over that. And what we're going to talk about here is walking through the property and just taking a series of video shots. One per room, or the features that you want to point out. Instead of trying to take one long video as you're walking through the property, if you could break it down into just individual shots, it would make it a lot easier. You don't have to remember a script. You're not walking through the property trying to remember what you're saying next with a lot of downtime and looking like the Blair Witch Project. Yep. No, we want to you know, try and keep it too simple. How many of you are responsible for taking photos of your listings? Most of you. Okay. So that means you have a digital camera, correct? Unless your camera is over 10 or 15 years old, every one of those digital cameras has a video mode that you can switch to from picture to video. If you're not sure if yours does, yours does, you can look on it. If you're not sure how to use it, YouTube is probably the greatest learning channel there is out there. Okay, there are videos on there on just about any subject you can think of. You could look up your individual camera and I guarantee you there will be videos from multiple sources showing you exactly how to use every single feature that's on that.
that camera. If you were to watch every video that was on YouTube right now, any idea how long you'd be watching the video for? <laughs> Currently, it's about 500 years worth of video and growing exponentially. It's the second largest search engine in the world after Google. And Google owns YouTube, so that makes Google very happy. And Google rates content with video very highly in its search results. Consumers want to see and get their information by video when they can. Um, <clears throat> the challenge is when it comes to real estate, nobody's really offering it. And the challenge with finding stuff on YouTube, even though you may get a ton of results, the results that you typically get aren't sorted by how long ago the video was put up, or how many views it's had, or how long or short it is. It's random based on the keywords that you put in. So there's a lot of real estate videos that are up there, but if you do a search, and let's say you just search in this area for real estate, you may find videos from five years ago, two years ago, a year ago, a month ago, a week ago, and they're all intermingled. So it makes it a hard experience for the consumer. And I will tell you, there's more value in taking a video as a listing tool than it is waiting for buyers to come find it somewhere on YouTube or even our own channel or even your own web page if it's there. The way the video becomes valuable is when you push it out. When you create the video, have it up on YouTube and take that link and send it out by email. Same <laughs> way you would for a hot sheet. You know, with your listing, send out the link to the videos to all the cooperative agents that you work with, all the agents in the office, send it to the seller. They're gonna turn around and send it to everyone they know. But even more valuable is as a listing tool, if you can offer this to your sellers, I would venture to guess that the majority of your competition isn't even approaching that yet. They may offer a virtual tour, a visual tour, anyone using those? Okay, the challenge with a virtual or visual tour is that it's typically the same pictures that you already have for the listing, only it's set to a slideshow with, with background music. And that's it, it's not offering any new information to the consumer. If they can watch a video that's two to three minutes long where you're explaining and walking them through the property where they can see you know, the, the depth and the scale and how the house is laid out, that gives them a whole lot more information than they can get by just looking at the pictures and descriptions. So I'm assuming that you're here because you have an interest in video, you just haven't gotten there yet. It's either that or Lance told you you better be here. <laughs> but I'm hoping it's because you want to learn and want to see if this is something that you can do. And so <clears throat> what we'll start with is actually taking the video on the property. As I had mentioned, you don't have to take one long continuous video. Now, to get over that part about being in the video, what I've seen a number of agents do, and I have an example here, is they'll create an opening shot Get comfortable with it, get dressed up, make it the way that you want, maybe 10 seconds. Hi, my name is John Murray, I'd like to take you on a short video tour. And it might be in a nice setting, maybe in my neighborhood or some area that I'd like to show off. But that's it, once I get that right, that becomes the beginning of every one of my videos. That's my opening scene. And then I can do the same with the closing scene where I thank everyone for watching or just have all my contact information. But once you do that, then the rest of it's easy. Every listing that you do, you just have to be the voice behind the camera. People want to make the connection with you. They would rather see you in the video at some point, so if you can just introduce yourself at the beginning, it would make it easier then for you to, you don't have to worry about what you dress like, um, when you go on the listing, and you can just take the video without having that fear of actually being on the video. If you're comfortable being in the video, great. You might get a tripod like the one you see in the middle of the room here. In fact, I have one uh, that I use, and then I've used it on demonstrations and going out and uh, actually taking videos with, with agents at a listing. And Walmart and Radio Shack have the same one. It's portable. It folds up to about 12 inches, and it costs about $13, $14. And there's two reasons that I like using the tripod. One, for obvious reasons, if I'm going to take a video shot of myself, I can set it up, hit the record button, get in front of the camera, and then, you know, when I'm finished, come back and just turn it off. Part of what we'll show you with the editing is how to trim off the beginning or end of a, a video clip. In fact, when we talk about the video clips, there's only three things that we're going to do with that video clip. We're going to trim it if it needs to be, to show you how to cut off a little bit at the beginning or the end. 
Uh, <clears throat> then we're going to put a transition, just a simple fade between the scenes so they transition nicely from one into the other instead of having a harsh ending. And the third thing that we're going to show you is how to put subtitles on the individual video clips if you'd like. Maybe you want to have the address pop up. Maybe you want to have your name and phone number pop up. You might have your web address. So I have just a couple of simple scenes here. We're only going to work with three because the idea is we don't need to make a long movie. We just need to show you how to manipulate, the, uh, manipulate those individual scenes. So that's what we're going to look to do with those. All right, so that part about creating an opening video shot. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. All right, today will go a lot better if you actually answer me and, and talk to me <laughs> and, and work with me. Otherwise, I'm just the corporate guy at the front of the room, and then you'll be looking at your watch and wondering when you can get out of here. Uh, <clears throat> and as I go through the processes, you know, I want you to stop me if you're not sure exactly what I'm doing. I'll try and point out everything. So I had asked about digital cameras. You all have it, so you all have the hardware. How many of you have digital uh, uh, movie editing software? Okay. For those of you that didn't put your hand up, do you have a computer? Yeah. Okay. Every computer does have video editing software on it. If it's Windows based, it's called Windows Movie Maker. If you're a Mac person, it's called iMovie. It's already built into your software. There are some versions of like Windows, or I think Vista, like the first version or an early version came and didn't have it in it. But you can go to Microsoft.com and just download it for free. So it's Windows Movie Maker. And that's what we're going to be using here today. And just as an example on YouTube, if you were to go into YouTube and put in a Windows Movie Maker tutorial, any idea how many videos you would find that would walk you through on tutorial? Several. Currently, there's about 64,000. <laughs> okay? And it'll break down by your individual version of Windows. Like, I have Windows 7 here, so my version of Windows Movie Maker is going to look probably a little bit different than yours if you don't have Windows 7, if you have Windows 8 or if you have XP. Um, it'll look a little bit differently, but the functionality that we're going to be talking about today is in there. In fact, it has a ton of functionality. But what we don't want you to do is sit there and try and make the video perfect and play with all these different things, because if you spend hours trying to do one video, <laughs> then you'll never take another video again. You'll just drop it. It'll be too much time. So what we're looking to do today is to show you how you can quickly and easily take the video clips and you know, put them onto your computer and just marry them together into a movie with just those three functions that I had talked about. So what I typically recommend is, you know, if, if you're taking the, the listing photos, you probably have um, a folder you know, for that individual property that you drop all of your documents and your photos in. You're going to do the same thing with your video clips so you can keep everything in one place. All right, when you're at the property, What I'm recommending is these series of short video shots. There's a thousand ways that you can create a video and you can be very creative doing it. What I'm looking to do is just show you a very, very simple way. And then you can take it from there once you get comfortable with the process. All right, but if you have that opening scene that you're in and that's your signature scene, that's great. Then you might start, you know, typically like you would with a fire out in front of the house and just uh, welcome the people to your property. You know, just the camera on. Hit record. Hi, my name is John Murray. I'd like to welcome you to 123 Main Street. Or if you've already had your name and everything uh, in you know, your intro scene, just keep it simple. You only have to take maybe 5, 10, 15 seconds of each room. Because quite literally, you might be standing in a corner and you want to let the video viewer know how you're progressing through the property. Whether you're turning left or you're turning right, because if you're going to take individual shots, it's not like the buyer that's standing next to you that sees how the house is laid out. What you would like to do is let the viewer know how you're walking through the property. So you might come in through the front door, say, okay, well, we're inside the foyer here, we have a beautiful chandelier, and it's got the hardwood floors, and immediately to our left is the dining room, and immediately to our right is the living room. Click. Okay. Click. Okay, now we're in the living room, and I'd like to point out, you know, the, uh, the wainscoting, and it's got the great bay window, and it's got the tray ceilings, whatever features you want. So, on and on, the same way you would walk a barn through, what are the things that you're going to point out about a house, or a room, or a piece of, uh, <clears throat> you know, the, the outside, the backyard, whatever the features that you would typically focus on, that's what you want to try and convey in the video, too. Ultimately, we're, we're looking to get a video that's maybe three minutes or less. And I find in the average house, 
uh, you're probably looking at about 15 to 20 scenes. Okay, so you can go from room to room. Let's say you have a, you know, a two-level house that has you know, the bedrooms upstairs and the rest of the rooms downstairs. If you have two standard bedrooms that are 8 by 10 or 10 by 12, whatever they might be, and then you have a master suite, you don't necessarily need to walk in to every single bedroom if they're all identical. As an example, you could say, okay, now we're at the uh, top of the stairs. I'm going to walk down the hallway here. And immediately on the left, uh, we have uh, a bedroom that's uh, 10 by 10. It's got a walk-in closet. And as we continue down the hall, right next to it, we have another bedroom. And that has you know, a walk-in closet. And right next to that, we have a uh, half bath. And as we make our way down to the hall, we come to the master suite. So that could be just one video clip as you're walking slowly down, just keeping in mind that you want to keep the camera steady. Master suite then, you know, might have more features, it might have ceiling fans, it might have whatever. And the master bathroom, you know, might have features um, that you would like to point out, but nobody's really a big fan of taking either photos or video of the bathroom, unless there's something special that you would like to point out. Also another reason, one of the things that you want to be careful of, same as you would with photography, Wherever you take a video clip from, look around the room and make sure that you cannot see yourself. Make sure you're looking at mirrors, reflective surfaces, windows, even picture frames sometimes with the glass, depending on how much light is in the room, you know, it's going to reflect your image. And you don't want to get back to the office after creating this great video and all of a sudden there you are holding the camera you didn't intend to be in the shot. So these are just some tips. Uh, in fact, on Coal Banker Works, how many of you are familiar with Works? as our intranet site. We have a ton of resources on there. In fact, we have a whole section on on location, which will give you tutorials and a lot of other information. I have uh, some PDFs that I put up there that essentially is almost like an outline of what we're talking about today, with tips and techniques for when you're inside a property, what to do, what to look for. So are you comfortable with the idea of just taking short video clips in the rooms as you go from room to room? Yes. OK, so that's something that you could do. Yes. That's generally the easy part. Where people or agents get hung up on is the idea of the editing and what I have to do uh, to make those video clips come together as a movie. So that's what we're going to spend the majority of our time in, is on how to edit, edit those video clips. And we'll go back and forth, and I'm going to sit down here with you and actually work through and we're going to bring up Windows Movie Maker. And I'm going to bring up a couple of scenes that I have, and we'll go through those three processes that I talked to you about. So as you're watching what I'm doing on the screen, you know, I'll point out the different tabs or the areas that I'm going to. If you're stuck and you're not sure what I just did, please stop me and ask me, and I'll make sure that I you know, show you again exactly what I was doing so that you can work with these video clips. Are you going to a site now that we can follow along if we have a... I'm not going to a site, I'm actually going to the software that's embedded in my computer, Windows Movie Maker. Okay. So if you have that on your computer, you, know, you can bring it up. I'm not sure if you have any video clips to work with though, but at least you can bring it up and see where these tabs are and what you need to do. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so this is the home screen of Windows Movie Maker for Windows 7. And the first thing that we're going to do, you see up in the top left here on this home tab, you have a home tab, you have animations, visual effects, project, view. Most of these we're not even going to touch. We're just going to focus on a couple of areas. So the first thing I want to do is add videos and photos. Now this is Windows based. It's very simple. It's drag and drop. Um, once you have your scenes in there, you can just move them any way that you want. So I have three scenes here. I have um, an opening. I have a middle, and I have a closing. <clears throat> That's all I need to work with to be able to show you what I'm looking to do. Now, if you see up here it says add videos and photos. You can intermingle video clips as well as photos if you would like as well. Or you can put photos at the end, and I'll give you an example you know, of what we did with an agent just for demonstration purposes. But uh, she took a picture of her business card and said, why don't I just do that as my ending? It has all my contact information. I can let it stay up there for as long as I want. So 
this is a poor picture of a business card, but it was just for use as, uh, as an example when we were playing with it in one of our last classes. Okay, so obviously, you know, you want to take a better picture, but for Georgina, it has all of her contact information. All right, so let's go to the opening clip, and what I want to do, and you see as I click on these, uh, these uh, pictures, I can just click on them and drag them if I want to change the order. You know, your opening and closing are, are pretty typical, but you might want to look at, okay, what are the rooms that I want to show and what order do I want to show them? Okay, so I told you that I wanted to look at seeing if I could trim off any of the video. Maybe it's a little bit too long or I don't need it. All of it. As I put my mouse on the individual scenes over here on the right, you see there's a black line. That's my timeline. I can click on that and I move it along with my mouse to anywhere I want inside the video. And there's a couple of uses for that. And we'll show you that in a minute. So the first thing I'll do is just uh, play this uh, initial video clip. And what I'm looking for is to see if there's time I can cut off at the beginning of it. Hi, I'm good. Okay, so you, I'm looking at my timeline here. She doesn't even start speaking until about here. So what I'm going to do is on the um, edit tab up here, I have two buttons to the right here, set the start point or set the end point. If I click on set the start point and I have my timeline over here, it's going to cut off the front of that video clip. So now I can just take a quick look and see if I've cut off enough time. If I cut off too much, I can just undo it. Hi, I'm Beth Dorman and welcome to 35 West Side Drive. Okay, I'm comfortable with that. Immediately to the left. Okay, she starts talking right away. I don't need to clip anything from the beginning of that. Let me just check the end real quick. No, I want to show all those pieces. And then this is the final scene. Now, this poor agent, Beth, um, has me holding the camera while there's 15 agents behind her all staring at her. And she had never taken a video before. In fact, when we went into the office that morning, she had no idea that we were going to choose her listing to go out and, and you know use it as a a training day um, with her listening. So she was scared to death, and she's actually in the video here, but by the time we took the video clips and went back to the office and put them together, she went back that afternoon and redid it entirely herself and had it up on YouTube that afternoon. But let's look at this uh, last video clip, and what, she's, what we're looking to do is have her just thank everyone for watching the short video, she gives her contact information, and then we were just going to pan over to the left, you know, looking at this nice backyard with the dock and it's got, you know, a nice little bulkhead. But as she finishes saying what she's rehearsed now, she has this look of horror, like, thank goodness this is over. <laughs> so that might be something we want to trim off. <laughs> So I'm just going to scroll this back a little, and I'm going to stop this timeline right when she finishes speaking. And I'll leave just like a split second afterwards. Because I had also told you that we're going to put a fade in between each one of the scenes. So I want to be careful to leave a tiny bit of time at the beginning and the end of each scene so I'm not cutting out any of the words. All right, so I can stop right there, and it'll fade out. And we can, now I'm going to click on up here, it says set the end point. So, I'm going to click on that and cut that off. Okay, so let me just move my timeline back and just double check it, make sure I didn't cut off too much. My website at Thank you. Okay, that's fine. Once we put the fade in, it'll look a little bit better. It takes just a little bit of playing with it. So, all right, so that's the first thing we wanted to do. We wanted to be able to trim the clip. Now, somebody had asked me, well, that scene was really nice at the end, you know, can we just cut out the middle part? And yes, there's a way that you can do that. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to add that very scene, same scene back in, but I'm going to cut off most of the front so I get it just past when she has that, so we get the scroll going over from the rest of the, um, rest of the backyard. So click on uh, closing. 
Just double click on it and it comes back in. And what I'm gonna do now is move this business card to the end. And what I want in this scene is to be able to cut it off uh, right after she says her thank you. Okay, so I just want to move it a tiny bit forward and I'll let it fade. So I'll try that there. And now I'm going to set the start point there. So it will go from one scene and cut out her part in the middle and then continue on to the end. So let's just see what that looks like. Okay, that's not too bad. You know, I'll play with it and see if I like it. Yes, sir. I got probably an elementary question. A scene is from when you start and stop the camera? Yes. Okay. So, in this case, this is the opening scene, and it is from when I start and stop the camera. So, I'm looking at my scenes just to make sure, you know, once you've taken them a couple of times, you'll know, when to, you'll know when to start the camera and when to stop it. So, for the most part, you won't even need the trim that much, but just in the beginning, when you're playing with it, Part of what you're looking to do is making sure that you're keeping that buyer or that viewer engaged in watching this video. Uh, so you want to constantly be speaking, and that's why if you break it down into these individual scenes, you don't have to rehearse a lot, you just talk about what's in that room and then move on. You don't want to have scenes where you're just kind of taking a video of the room but not telling the viewer what they're looking at. That would be like walking a buyer next to you as you went to a room and just pointing <laughs> and not saying anything. So the video has to be engaging because as it is, what is the attention span of your buyers right now? Okay? Pretty short. You know, if you have a video that is not holding their attention, uh, you'll lose them quickly. Okay. So now we have these scenes. I've trimmed off what I needed to. And so the next thing to do is I'm going to go back to the home screen up here. Well, I'm sorry, animations. And you'll see there's a variety of different transitions from Hi. one scene into the next. Okay? In fact, there's a lot of them. You can get pokey with them. You can do this kind of transition. You can have it pixelate and come in. I'm a fan of just doing a simple gray fade. Again, you can do whatever you want, but I'm trying to show you the quickest, easiest, and use this as a default, and it's a nice, clean way of transition from one scene into the next. Now, in this version of, of Windows, it has this great button here. It says, Apply to All, and it'll apply to every scene. All right? Some of the older versions of XP, you'd have to sit here and drag and drop it down in between the scenes. And, but even still, if you've got 15, 20 scenes, it's no big deal. It just takes a couple of seconds. So let's see what this looks like to make sure I didn't cut her off and make sure I'm comfortable with the scene. Okay, I'm just going to move to the next scene to see how it is there. <coughs> or visit my website at ddtonesonline.com. Thank you. Okay, so that worked out well. It cut out her whole part. You could still hear her say thank you and then just scrolled over to the rest of the backyard. Yes, sir. This is just kind of a general question. Is this going to be on the website so we can yes. look at it again and again? You, you see that, that video camera in the middle yeah. of the room? I just want to make sure. We will have it on our YouTube channel. For those of you that are not aware, and God forbid we haven't made you aware of this, we have a YouTube channel. How many videos do we have on that right now? A couple hundred? Piles. At least 150 videos. Everything we do training-wise, including the John's session right now, is being videoed. So if you kind of miss it and say, ah, I mean, you're in, don't ask the question, which is silly, ask the question. But this will be up on our YouTube channel within a day or two. Okay, so you can go back, you can take a look at it, and, um, and, and relive it in all of its glory. Relive it in all of its sure. glory, is that great? Right? You know, Lance, how many agents do you have all together? Would you say about 200? Um, at least, there's at probably least. more than that. We were growing up anywhere from one to four or five videos a week, and we've been doing that for a couple of years. Okay. In case you are not aware, well, first, you know, everyone has a profile page on cobblebanker.com. Now, it's up to you whether it's filled out or not and is, is visible. So if somebody is doing a search, um, 
let's say, you know, you know, in the town that you're in, every agent that serves that area is going to come up in the search results. And it'll rotate. Okay? Um, as long as you have the picture and the information filled out, if you haven't uploaded your picture, your video, I'm sorry, your profile is not going to be shown. It's just going to be at the bottom with your name, and then it'll have the contact information for the office. Any agent that has a video of themselves on their profile page will always be at the top of every search, and everyone else will rotate underneath them. So you here, which are about 10% of the company, have an opportunity that your brethren don't have right now because who knows when they're going to see this or learn how to do it. Okay? So, yes, for your agent video, you might actually have to be in that one. But, all right, come on. Uh, but you can practice that. And that's something you can you know, practice till you get right, and then you only have to do it once. But you don't need to have a long video. You don't need to sit there and, and try and go through your uh, entire alphabet soup. Just quickly tell the viewer a little bit about yourself, maybe about the area that you serve. You know, tell a little bit about the community. In fact, what some agents do is they'll just do a very quick intro, like they did for the listing video, and they'll have video clips of some of their customers giving a quick testimonial, talking about the service that they provided. So in that case, you have somebody else talking about the great things that you do, instead of having yourself sitting there trying to say the same thing, and it doesn't come across as well. So if you can get some of your customers to do that for you, and again, it might be 10, 15 seconds, your video can be as short as you want it to be. It could be a half a minute or a minute, and that'd be great, where it's just basically an intro of yourself. If you upload that through Cobalt Banker Works, through our on-location channel, it'll not only appear there, but it'll attach to your profile page. And the same with the listing videos that we're talking about right now. If you upload it through Cobalt Banker Works on our video upload tool, it'll go to our channel and on that map, but it'll also attach directly to your listings. So on your listings, the video won't be a link, it'll be embedded right along with the photographs. And so that's another way that that video gets seen instead of just waiting for people to try and find it on YouTube. Okay, so back to the scenes here. So you see, we, we put the fade in. Okay, and fade to that final scene there. Now, I realize the speakers are a little bit low, but the sound isn't really as important here as just looking at the, uh, the process that we're trying to go through here. Now, I, I get asked by a lot of agents, well, can I just take the video and then come back and, and just do a voiceover or something like that? Yes, you can, but that's a more difficult class. Uh, and we want to start with the basics. I will tell you, having just the natural sounds of the property, um, you know, provided you're not standing right on a highway and have trucks going right by you all the time. Um, you want to be aware of the sounds that are going on around you, but if you can take care of the, the audio while you're in the property and, and just talking about and describing what you're seeing, um, it'll save you time rather than trying to come back and trying to line up the video and then trying to, you know, uh, make sure that what you're saying matches up with, with the video clip. So, all right, so, We've created, uh, well, we've done two things now. We've trimmed the video clips that we wanted to. We've added a fade in between. So I'm going to go back to the beginning now. And I told you that, and I'll go back to the home tab here, that we might want to put text boxes up on, on the individual scenes. So let's take this first scene as an example. Hi, I'm Beth Dorman, and welcome to 35. All right, so she says 35 West Side Drive there. Now, what I would recommend is, and because you don't know where the viewer is coming from, say the entire address. 123 Main Street, any town, USA, even the zip code. Um, in this case, you know, it was just a practice run. So she just said the name of the street, 35 West Side Drive. So in this case, let's say I want to have that address pop up on the screen over here. So I'm going to move my timeline again and look to pause it right before she mentions her address. So it's right there. So I'll just move the timeline back just a tiny bit. Now, from this home screen, uh, just a little bit to the right of where you had add videos and photos, you'll see there's add music, you can add uh, webcam video, snapshot, but these are the three buttons we're going to look at here, and they're tiny, and I don't know why they did it, they're an important piece of it. The top one is to add a title, like you would at the beginning of a movie, which you really don't need here. The second one is the one that we're going to 
be concerned about, and that's to add a caption. So if I click on that, what it does is just drop a text box right in the middle of the screen. So in this case, I'm just going to type in 35 West Side Drive. Okay? And I'm just going to move it. And when I took this scene, I had Beth stay on the left side of the scene, knowing that I was going to try and put the address up somewhere. Because what I didn't want is, you know, this. I don't want it over her. And so, you know, the grass made for a really nice background. So I'll just move it over a little bit. Maybe I'm going to make it a tiny bit smaller. Um, I'll just drop it down here so it's a little bit subtle. Now what happens when I put up a caption on an individual scene, you'll see there's this little box below your scene here. That's where my caption is there. And the caption will last either to the end of that individual scene or for seven seconds as a default if the scene is longer than seven seconds. Up here you see there's the start time. That's where in the video that this text box is going to appear. And it tells me the text duration is like 1.7 seconds. So it's just going to the end of the scene. I can make it longer or shorter if I want. But I'm just going to go with the default here because it'll leave the address up there for that almost two seconds while she's mentioning it before it goes into the next scene. So all I'm going to do now, all I did was have to type it. Now I didn't have to save it or anything else like that. It's, it's automatically there. If I don't like it, I can click on it and just delete it. So let me pull back my timeline. And would you put the city in that portion too? You could. You know, you have to look at it. Now, these are simple text boxes, uh, so you can't put more than one, so you have to try and you know, cram everything uh, within that one area. What some agents do is they put their name and their phone number on the bottom and have it last for the entire video. And so it's there and present you know, with their phone number. Now, typically, this is going to be a link that's attached to an email that you're sending. You're already going to have most of your contact information in whatever way somebody finds this. But just in case they don't, you want to have contact information in here if you can. Um, videos aren't clickable yet, so it's not like you know at the video where you can see the email at the end. They're coming out with that and they're working on that, which I think would be really cool, but it's not in the versions we have right now. Yes, sir? Uh, also, uh, what I've seen in, and I talked to some other uh, brokers is that they put just the city instead of the address for security reasons, you know. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. Because we're, I mean, putting out, uploading on YouTube, and there's a lot of criminals looking at them also, right? So. Well, but you know, do you put the address on the listing? Yes, you do. So it's it same I, access, though, right? Yeah. Sure. It has pictures. Okay. Yeah, it has pictures of the house, and it has the address and the zip yeah. code. Yeah, yeah. It depends on the seller and their comfort level, and depends on yours. You know, I, I still know a lot of agents that won't put in the, the physical address for that reason. Right. So, when it comes to how this is treated, it would be treated the same way a photograph would or the rest of the listing. The information that you're conveying in here um, pretty much is already available, it's just a little bit more in depth. Now, if there's sensitive areas of the house that you don't want to show, fine, you just have to be aware of that. The same as if, you know, a photograph, if you're in a really nice house, you might not want to show the artwork that's there or some other stuff. So just like anything else, you just want to be careful and mindful of, of what you're taking and then look at it when you get it back uh, and create your video to make sure that it's um, not giving away anything that you don't want to. All right, so I'll pull the timeline back. I just want to make sure that it pops up the way I want it. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Okay, so that worked, right? I just had it pop up for when the address came up. All right, so did everyone see what I did there? I just clicked on caption, and wherever I am inside of the scene, that caption will just come up here, and I can move it wherever I want. Let's move to this um, ending scene here, where she's mentioning her phone number and her website address. So maybe we want to put uh, that kind of caption there as well. Even though we have contact at the end, uh, contact information, I'm just showing you as an example. You can put any information that you want in the text box. I just want to show you that you can do it, and it's relatively simple to do. All right. So I'm just going to move the timeline over a little bit because I know she mentions her phone number somewhere over here. All right, so she just starts to mention her phone number right here. So what I'm going to do is just click on that caption button again. It'll give me the text box there. So. Uh, I know her phone number is 302 something, so I'll just put in 555 1212 for now. 
All right. Now you can see the type kind of gets lost in the background here, so I'm maybe going to choose a different place for it. All right. Well, the scene, you know, the, the blue background up there is a pretty consistent color. And because this is a simple text box and I can change the size and font, I can also change the color. So maybe I'll make it a Coldwell Banker blue. I'm going to make it uh, left aligned so that it's up against the corner there. Uh, I can make it bold if I want. I can change the font. But I just keep the defaults because it's clean type, it's easy to read, and it's less time for me to play with it. I just take what's there. And all I'm really looking at is do I need to adjust the size a little bit. So I'll make it just a tiny bit smaller. All right. Now, as I had mentioned, it'll stay either to the end of the scene or seven seconds, uh, whichever is shorter. But because she's mentioning her website address too, I, you know, just uh, I might want to cut that down a little bit. So let me just watch it and see if I want to take any off. All right, so maybe I want to have another text box come up here. I'll only let me put one at a time. I can't put multiple text boxes on. So I'm just going to click on this. I'll double click on it so I can edit it. You see it brings me back to the format tab. And I'm just going to make this maybe five seconds. And that'll give me more time then to put in her website. So I'll just double check that again. So I'm going to stop right there, just when she's starting to mention her website, and I'll have that pop up. So again, I'll just click on the caption, um, and it's DE uh, Beach Homes Online.com. That's a long website. <laughs> okay. so again, I'll put it up in the corner just to be consistent. I'll make it left aligned. I'll make it the uh, blue type again. Make it just a hair smaller. And look, it fits nicely in the scenery there, so I'll just leave it there. And again, that'll just run to the end of that individual scene. All right, so I'm just going to pull the whole thing back and just make sure I like the way it came up. If I don't, I can just double click on it, delete it, add it again, or you know, just drag it left or right if I want it to start at a different point. So you can have two captions running at the same time? Or no, you can't. no, you can't. So that's why I had to have one follow the other. Okay. Uh, newer versions might be able to, but every time Windows comes out with a new version of Windows, they come out with a new version of Windows Movie Maker, and each version does a little bit more than the last one. So the current versions might work. <coughs> My Windows now is like three generations old, I think. Uh, and it came out just a year and a half ago. <laughs> okay, so. Is everyone comfortable with what I've done with those video clips so far? All right. Essentially, we're done. That's all I needed to do to those. And I have a movie. So what I'm going to do is, before I save it and burn it, I'm just going to check the whole thing and make sure that I'm comfortable with it. something that you can do? Yes. Okay. Now, Windows Movie Maker will accommodate just about any file type, movie file type, but there is a few that it don't. There are some new ones that come out. It seems like every camera maker, you know, has a different type of file, you know, whether it's MP4 or .mov or .avi, just movie types. Worst case scenario, if Windows Movie Maker does not work with your camera, 
a lot of times the camera maker, whether it's Kodak or Sony or whoever it is, Canon, has their own video editing software that you can download for free. Or there's some really good ones, and you don't have to go high-end production. I'm talking about stuff from either Adobe or Corel that you can get for like $50 to $75. You can download it directly online, and you know it has even more functionality than Windows Movie Maker. So that would be worst case scenario. But they all have the same type of functionality. And like I said, you can get really fancy uh, you know, with uh, all these different options. But I'm trying to get you not to get stuck on those fancy options the first one or two times. I want you to get comfortable with, oh, I can do this quickly. Because if you do that, then you'll be comfortable with taking a video of your listing. If you don't, and spend a lot of time on it. The next time, the next go round, you're, you're not going to spend the time on it. So. And I think you know that as well as, as I do. Okay, so now that I'm comfortable with you know, the, the movie that I've created for the listing, um, I want to be able to save the movie. But I want to do two things. I want to save the project first. And so within Windows Movie Maker, you'll see up on the top left here, when I click on the, you know, on the, on the top, it has new project, open project, save project. I want to save the project. Because let's say I want to change out one of the scenes later on. Once I burn the movie, now I have just one video clip that makes it much harder to edit or take out scenes. I'd have to do it all over again. But if I save the project and just keep it in the same folder with my uh, listing video, uh, I can go back to this at any time. I can change the captions. You know, maybe have an opportunity to even add a couple of scenes if I have. You know, it was a crummy day and you didn't have nice shots outside. You want to come back and uh, edit it, or maybe have other stuff from the community that you wanted to add onto it. Whatever. If you save the project, then you can come back to exactly where we are right now and, and edit any of this. Okay, so once I save the project, and typically, typically what I recommend is, is saving your movie and your project by the address. So in other words, you know, this movie I'll save as 123 Main Street, Anytown, USA. Uh, even include the zip. Uh, for two reasons. One, to make it easier for me to find it you know, when I need to, to access it or if I want to upload it. But two, if somebody's searching, particularly for you know uh, a town or a street or even that address, uh, it'll come up much quicker on searches. If you have the full name of the street and the address um, as the title of the movie, does that make sense to everyone? You are a very quiet crowd. Okay. <laughs> then we want to save the movie now. It may be a little bit hard to see on the screen here, but it allows you to save it in, in different types of versions. Um, it allow you to save it as either a high definition or burn to a DVD or for a computer or for email. But those really are different sizes. Okay? <coughs> I would not recommend doing your movie in HD. Okay? A lot of the digital cameras nowadays, they have uh, HD settings. Um, and more than anything, it's just so they can market themselves against the other camera manufacturers so they keep upping the size on the megapixels and all that. I will tell you that the old cameras from you know, 10 or 15 years ago by Olympus and Canon that were 2 or 3 megapixel are more than plenty of size for the web. Okay? If you create a high definition movie, it's not going to make that much of a difference at all in the quality. And remember, most people are going to be watching it on a screen this size or maybe on a tablet this size. What I'm showing you up here on the screen, now, you know, it's through a projector, so it's not as clear as it might be on my screen here, but even still, that was done at the lowest setting possible. In fact, it was done with a flip cam, which I love, but they don't even make anymore. Uh, Google stopped making it, I think, about a year and a half, two years ago. And I loved it because it has a little pop-out. It's just a USB. I just plugged the whole thing into my computer. It would download automatically, and it even has its own editing software. But it can't do as much as the Windows Movie Maker. But in any event, if I'm watching the video on a screen like this, if it's a high definition movie, what's going to happen is I'm trying to watch it and it's going to keep starting and stopping, starting and stopping as it's trying to stream. If you save it to the smallest possible setting, you will still have a quality video, but it's something that you can upload quickly, but more importantly, your customers or whoever is viewing it will be able to view it quickly without it stammering. So, and I'll just give you an example. The same video clip, now this whole video is like 40 seconds long. If I save it for a high definition display, I'm not sure if you can read it there, but it says estimated file size is 173 megs, just for that 40 second video clip. If I save it for the email setting, it is now only 11 megs. Okay, so high definition is 15 times the size, it's not 15 times the quality, not by any stretch. So this version, 
will allow you. And now you take that 40 seconds and, and multiply that into a three minute video, you know, even at the smallest settings, it's a decent sized file. And it's not something that you would never send the file itself by email. Uh, once you put it up on YouTube, it's from there that you want to send out the link. So would that be the smallest settings for email size? On, on this one, it's for email. On like older versions of Windows Movie Maker, it'll tell you the sizes. It'll give you, you know, the, the different sizes. Now, I don't know why they did it this way. I guess they thought they were making it easier for you know, whoever's using the software. Okay. So once I save the movie, I can either go to YouTube. Now, how many of you uh, have an account on YouTube? Okay, if you don't have one, you'll need one. Because that's where you're going to put your videos, and that's where you're going to grab the URL to be able to upload to either your listing or to your profile page or onto Cobalt Bank of Works. Um, so you'll need to set up a Google account on YouTube. It's as simple as your email address and a password. There's no fees, there's, there's no cost. So <coughs> if you don't have one, you should have one. Unless, Lance, you want to have them just put the listing videos right on the company channel then that's another option as well. And they can just drop it in there. But for them to be able to save it there, they would need your password. So you'd have to decide whether you want to do maybe even a separate channel just for listings. Well, you're all welcome to put your stuff on our channel, but you should all should have your own, I think. Mm -hmm. And it takes, how long does it take to set it up? Like two minutes? Yeah, that's it. Um, okay. You'll notice even from uh, Windows Movie Maker here, once you save it, you can upload it to Facebook and YouTube right from the software here, once you're done. Okay, so you can, you can put it there. All right, um, any questions about the video editing? So we went through actually taking the video, we went through the editing, and none of you have questions. Wow, you, know, you all got it and have no problems and we'll have no problems tonight <laughs> when you go home and do this. Okay? Um, I, I said I want to make it interactive. If you're not sure about any of those steps that I did and you want to see it again, I'd be glad to do it. Because what we're going to do next is talk about uploading the video. And that will only really be a couple of minutes. But I also want to spend time showing you an app, a new app that came out. How many of you have heard of Videolicious? Okay, so only a couple of you. Videolicious is an app for the iPad or iPhone. Uh, they are in the process of developing it for Droid phones as well. And Droid tablets. Videolicious isn't a real estate app. It's just a, a general video application that was out there. And as we found out about it, we thought it might have some great application for real estate. In fact, make the video process maybe even easier. Okay? Uh, so we're going to show you that app, how to use it. And as another version of a video that you're creating, you know, this is even simpler than what I've been showing you here. All right, so for right now, what I want to go to is Cobalt Banker Works. And once you're on the home screen of Works, you'll see on the Browse Popular sections here, there's a video upload tool. But it's also in the quick links over here, and it'll always be here because the popular sections change and move. But this is alphabetical. You just go down to the bottom, it's V, so it's next to last video upload tool from on location. So what we're going to do is click on video upload tool. Now if you have never up, uh, uploaded a video yet, and that would be most of you, you'll just have your first screen will just be, you know, accept the conditions, you know, the read and you accept. Uh, and then you'll come to this screen and this says either view the video statuses so I can look at the videos that were already put up there or upload a video. So when I click on that, it's going to ask me for the type of video. Now, <coughs> I'm not an agent and I don't have listings. So my only choices are a community or a general video. As an agent, and depending on how you know company has things set up, but most agents, you'll be able to put up a listing video or an agent video or a community video. You can put up a, a variety of different videos. But from this drop-down box, if you choose listing, you'll automatically get a second drop-down box where it'll have all of your listings. So you just click on the listing that this video applies to. And then we're going to click on continue. And when you have a listing video, it's only going to have these three things, title, description, and keywords. The rest of this, because you know, I, I'm uploading a community video, but not really, it's going to ask me for you know, the exact address and all that. You won't need that on a listing video, because it's automatically attached to a listing. We already have the address and know exactly where it is on the map. Okay, so the title, again, typically, 
I just use the address as the title. All right, description. I can just cut and paste from my listing, you know, the description I have. Uh, if you have a long description on, you know, the uh, cobalbanker.com page or even your own company website, uh, you probably want to cut it down to maybe a paragraph or less. Because if they're there to watch the video, they're not spending that much time reading the description. They'd rather hear you tell them about the problem. And then keywords. Keywords is critical here. Because this is software that was developed by YouTube for us and in conjunction with us. Um, in the beginning, we had a lot of errors and we couldn't figure out why when people were uploading a video. Now, we've made the process a lot simpler now. You no longer need to physically upload the video file. The last thing it's going to ask you for after you fill out this information is the actual URL of the video itself. So once you save it on YouTube, you know, you get that web address, the URL, and that's what you're going to cut and paste and put in here. Then once you do that, you click save and continue, and then we're going to upload it to Couple Banker channel on location, and we're also going to link it directly and, and embed it in your listing. So now back to keywords for a minute. What I found is that no matter what you're putting in there, even if it's phrases, you want to separate every single word with a comma. So let's say I'm, I'm going to put some of the keywords in there. There's John Murray, real estate, uh, you know, the town, maybe the zip code. So I'm going to put in John, comma, Murray, comma, uh, any town, comma, uh, 11209, comma, uh, maybe the name of the development, or just some other keywords that might be appropriate for that video. So, if you do every single word separated by a comma, you don't even have to put a space after the comma, just separate the words by the comma, uh, you will find that you will not have problems. And it has a little countdown here to let you know when you're running out of characters. It lets you have about 100 characters or so. So you get about 8 or 10 words in there. If you want, I and mean, you can just put one or two if you want, and it really doesn't matter. So essentially, that is the upload process. Once I hit continue and just put in the URL, since I don't have a video to put up here and I don't want to inadvertently put one up on Cobalt Works. Are you comfortable with what I have described here? Yes. 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 Can, you, can you say description again? You put the URL in there. Okay, so the, dis the title would typically, I just use you know, the, the address. It could be whatever you want. You know, beautiful house on memory lane. Uh, description, again, you can put in whatever you want, but it's typically easier if you could just cut and paste from your actual listing description. So if I'm on you know, cobalbanker.com and I have my listing, I can just you know, cut and paste and put that in my description. So you understand what I did there then? Okay, all right, good. Um, all right, so now I've taken my video, I've edited it, and I've uploaded it. Now, without going through all this training, this is a process I could have done probably in about 20 minutes, going through all my scenes just quickly, looking at them, putting captions if I want to. If I don't want to, I don't need to. I also said that I wanted to show you an example of, of an agent's opening. And what I have in here is a young woman from uh, north of Boston, Massachusetts. Let me just get to the area. Her name is uh, Jen Maxwell. Now, Jen has no problem being in the videos. In fact, she's in all of them. But she created this really cool opening scene that she has for all of her videos, and that's her signature piece. set it up on a tripod and just you know played with it until she had something and then you know thought it was really cool so that's the beginning of all her videos right that's what you could do for yourself too but again you know try and be in the video but you see how the background she had she's not selling beds and baths she's selling that community and the houses in that community so that's what she was looking to show off think about you know the, the area that you're representing you know what's your farming area what are the, the types of properties that you're going after maybe a beautiful park setting 
use that as your open. Do something that's a little bit unique, a little bit different. You know, try and get out of the office instead of just sitting behind your desk, you know, doing your intro there, although you could. But if you can be a little bit creative on that opening and get that right, then you don't have to worry about it again. Okay. All right, before I move on to video listens, we've been moving through this pretty quick, mostly because you haven't asked questions and I didn't have to go back and do things several times. Um, are you comfortable with this or are you just looking to get out of here as soon as possible? <laughs> We're comfortable. <laughs> You're not going to answer that, are you? Okay. We're comfortable. <laughs> All right. Well, I see people getting up and moving. Do you want to take a 10 minute break and we'll finish up the last half hour with this? It'll actually be a little bit less half hour or do you want to just keep going? Am I going to lose you if you step out of the room for 10 minutes? <laughs> Lance, what do you think? Actually, keep going. Let's go. Okay. Let's roll. All right. All right, so Videolicious, this cool little app that we have. And how many of you have an iPhone or iPad? Okay, most of you do. You have access to it right now, it's pretty cool. Let me show you this one little piece here that I use to connect to the projector. Mm -hmm. This and this cable right here, which you can get from Radio Shack or Best Buy or anywhere. Most of today's flat screen TVs, which most of your customers have, give you the ability to plug your computer into the flat screen. So you'll have your cable input, you'll have HDMI, and usually you'll have um, an input for your computer. What I've seen agents do, and what I thought was really cool, is when they're either giving a listing presentation or some other demonstration on their iPad or even from their iPhone, with this piece I can connect to this and it's going to show up on their flat screen TV. What a great way to do a listing presentation. Or maybe show some other videos that you've done. I just like to share stuff as I learn it. These aren't my ideas, these are what agents have taught me, so I thought it was pretty cool. All right, let's bring this up. Come on now. Okay, let's see. There we go. All right, good. All right, so this is my screen on my iPad. You'll see that I have the icon down here at the bottom for Video Licious. V I D E O L I C I O U S. Okay, um, that's a great keyword to search on Global Bank of Works. We have an entire section on Video Licious, as well as for on location, which will give you tutorials and a lot of information about taking videos. So those are two search words that would be good to remember. All right, Video Licious. Very quick, funny story. Uh, about two months ago, you know, we came upon this app. And we started looking at it internally and thought, wow, this you know, could have some real, really good real estate applications. So let's, let's play with it and maybe get some agents to test it. So we bought several accounts and we identified an office or a couple of offices that we were going to send it out to groups of agents and invite them to play with it and see, you know, get their input and see what they thought of it. Well, Videolicious sent out the accounts and the information before the managers even had a chance to tell the agents that they were chosen to do the beta test. Most of the agents deleted the accounts as soon as they got them, thinking that they were being sent porn or spam <laughs> with the name Videolicious. <laughs> I would open it. <laughs> okay. All right, let me just plug in the speaker here. Come on now. There we go. All right, so I'm just going to click on the application here. And it's going to ask me to do just three quick things, and we're going to go through that. Now, what I have on here, let's do a new video. All right, what I have on here are some pictures that I just took of a generic listing. Video Videolicious will let you stream together pictures and or videos. So you can do video clips, send pictures, just pictures, just video clips. And you can either put them together and use the sound that's already on the video clip, or you can do a voiceover. Okay? And what it's going to look to do, and we'll, I'm going to show you right on screen, we'll go through the process, but <clears throat> it's going to ask me to choose my shots. So I'm just going to click on here, it's going to, I'm going to go to my camera roll that's on here, and I'll just take the first several pictures that are up here. So I'm going to press max number. Oh, come on. That's 
not where I am. Okay. It's stuck on the screen on here, but it's different on my iPad. How funny. I haven't seen it do that yet. Okay, let's try that again. Amazing. Okay, there we are. Oh, so now it's just asking me to choose my shot. So I'm just going to tap on the pictures, and I have several up here that I might, you know, use. So that's my first one, and I just tap the pictures or video clips that I want in the order that I want them. So I'm just going to go. There's a front of the house. Uh, that one's the uh, kitchen. Uh, this one's bathroom. Here's the back of the house. Here is almost like a foyer or a fenced-in back area. And you know what? Here's a really nice pool. I don't even know if these are all from the same list, but it's just for demo purposes. So I've chosen six shots here. So I'm just going to click on the upper right-hand corner here, and it says Save. And step two, what it's going to do now is, is film me at, for an intro, and then my pictures are going to appear on the lower right-hand corner. I'm just going to tap on them, and as I tap on them, I'm just going to talk to what's in that picture or the video clip. And then I just move on to the next one. I'm asked, I've finished each picture. Okay? Now, it'll show my face on here until we're done, but my face is only going to be on here until I hit that first picture. I can skip that step and not have myself on there, but, you know, it's better that I am on there. Again, if you have video clips that you've created as your opening, then maybe you just want to do that and you don't even have to, to do it live on here. So let me tell my story. And you're never supposed to take the camera from a lower angle. So let me just take it out of here a second. I'll hold it up. In fact, I'll have you in the background. There we go. <laughs> Give me a countdown. Hi, my name is John Murray. I'd like to take you on a short video tour of 123 Main Street. As we look at the first picture here, and you see in the lower right hand corner there, the picture moved up and it's uh, highlighted in green, so that's what it'll be showing on the video clip right now. Here we have the outside of this, uh, of this wonderful estate home, uh, and as we move to the inside, we're going to go to the kitchen now, and you see it has a beautiful center island, it has uh, uh, copper pots hanging from the ceiling, these are all included, it's got granite, counter, uh, granite countertops. And as we move into the master bathroom, you'll see that it has a steam shower and it has a jacuzzi. It's a, it's a really wonderful master bathroom. And now we're going to go to the outside. And here we see it's got beautiful landscaping. And it's got a beautiful uh, uh, closed-in porch room in the back. And then finally we're going to go to the backyard and see it has a beautiful pool with a waterfall. If you'd like additional information on this or any property, please give me a call. My name is John Murray. Here's my phone number. Yada, 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 yada. Okay, so I'm just going to click on Stop there. And so I'll get to preview it and let's see what it looks like. Well, come on now. Now, Videolicious, uh, you can get for free. 
or you can get the uh, the business version where it costs like five dollars a month and you get like you get to store up to a hundred videos you get to take longer videos uh, they can throw some perks at you and that ending you can download or you can make your own but it's a, it's a cool little ending that we have for the uh, Cobalt Banker account so there's only a couple of things more I need to do now this is different than what we did here with Windows Movie Maker because I have to have my shots lined up and I have to know what I'm talking about in those pictures and I have to do it kind of all in one shot. If I don't like it, I have to go back and do it over again. But if you could have the pictures done inside the listing, you could create that video while you're still in the listing, you know, taking some either video clips or, or pictures and just doing the voiceover as you're looking at them. Okay, so I'm just going to click on save here. Now it's also going to give me the opportunity on step three to put some background music if I would like to. Now, generally, I'm not a fan of background music, especially with Windows Movie Maker. If you try to add music, unless you know how to balance uh, the volume, I find that music often competes with your voice as you're speaking. So I think it can become more of a distraction than anything else. So, but in this case, it's going to let me choose music, and I get to choose the volume, you know, where I, whether I want more of the music or more of uh, my voice. So it gives you a lot of choices here. I'll just uh, let's try guitar mellow. Hi, my name is John Murray. I'd like so I can slide my video over and go to louder music, or I can look just at the first picture here. Or I can do none at all. All right, so that's as an example as a click on save. Okay, so now it'll give me my preview and let me listen to it with the music behind it. Hi, my name is John Murray. I'd like to take you on a short video tour of 123 Main Street. As we look at the first picture here, you see on the lower right hand corner there the picture moved up and it's uh, highlighted. In okay, so that's you see what it's sounds like. So right. I'm just going to click on save. Now, it asks me if I want SD, which is standard definition, which is a quick upload, or I can slide it over to a high definition uh, with a Wi-Fi upload. Again, I'm a fan of the standard definition. Just the way you see it here is the way people are going to see it on YouTube. As soon as I click on Save, the last step, it's going to ask me to publish my video, and where do I want to send it? Do I want to send it to my email? Do I want to send it to Facebook? Do I want to send it to YouTube or Twitter or all of them? Once I put in my account settings, I can put in my Facebook login. I can put in, obviously, my email address, Twitter, Facebook. I can do all of that. <clears throat> and then the final step is just to hit save, and it's going to send that video that I just created to those spots. And I'm done. That's my entire video done in probably, what, seven minutes, if that, once I had the pictures up there. But again, you're going to have to maybe rehearse a little bit so that you know you are not stuck on what you're looking at like I was up here just choosing photos real quick but it's certainly worth playing with so even if you get the free version and play with it see if you like it that might be an option for you as well and then you can send it right to either your own YouTube channel or, or to the company one but again as Lance had mentioned uh, it's probably it, not probably it is in your best interest to create your own channel uh, your own login for YouTube if you haven't done so already any questions on video issues? Okay, you're all folding up and ready to go. All right. Was this useful to you? Yes. 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 All right. Lance, you're going to, you know, yes. capture videos from all these people? Well, we should. I mean, are you... Well, this is the deal, guys. We've been talking about this. By the way, just so you understand the audience, yes. this was, if you wanted to come learn about video, show up. Mm -hmm. As opposed to you mandatory to show up here. So, you know, okay. that, needless to say, you know, eighty five percent of our agents that aren't interested in video are are um wait till they see this video. You know. <laughs> but um so, yeah. so you guys are interested but just quiet. Okay. Right. Yes. But let's hope so. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's also it's gonna be on the uh, on the C D work or on the uh oh, well, bank yeah. com. Yeah. So we're gonna follow that. Whatever we miss, we're going to go back and review that uh, video. Okay, well, this video that he's taking right yeah. now, too. Yeah. All right, oh, just a, another thing I wanted to mention, too. Um, if you're going to upload it to your MLS, most MLSs, and I mentioned this one is the same, will not let you put up either pictures or videos that has branding or has information about yourself on it. So, on the video that we created on uh, 
Windows Movie Maker, you know how I had that last scene that had just the business card with all the contact information? I might want to create a second version of my video and save it for just the MLS where I have that cut off. Uh, Lance, do you know if in videos, if, if the agent is allowed to be in it, if they just don't, don't identify who, what the company they're with, or are they allowed to say their name? Do you know what the rules are? Um, I think you've got to identify, yeah, you've got to identify who you are and what company you're with. Uh, with DRE stuff, I mean, Anna's whispering over here about DRE license numbers. That also applies, I bet, probably, ooh, God, I bet probably 90% of the videos out there don't have your DRE license number in there somewhere. Okay. Um, but that would be one of those things that, you know, someone will get their hand chopped off here, and now we will see DRE numbers in all the videos. Well, and you also have to be careful of that, too, with Facebook and other right. social media. The MLSs haven't quite figured out what to do with that yet or how they're going to tackle it. But if it means money, they're going to. And they'll treat that the same as your other advertising where you're required to have, whether it's the DRE, or whether you're required to have, like the, if you have the agent's phone number in there, you also have to have the company phone number and that kind of information. So whatever the rules that apply to either the listing online or to your regular marketing, they're going to look to apply to uh, Facebook and videos and pictures and everything else. So just be careful of that. And you know, just be wary that that may be coming down the pike. So it's to your advantage to make sure that you have all of that set up on your Facebook pages or whatever other social media that you're on and make sure that you have right contact information the way the MLS would typically look at it for advertising. And in the CAR on the, the website, there's a, a tutorial, I'm not sure, but I go, um, a video on the do's and don'ts on advertising. On their standards, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But most of them haven't applied that yet to social media. They do have some videos, yeah. They do. Okay. So they'll tell you exactly what you can and can't have. Uh, like with photographs that you have on listings, can you have a yard sign in them or any branding? I think no, you can. can. No, not in the MLS. Yeah, yeah, so I think the same will apply to videos where you can't. Which is contrary to everything else that you do for advertising where it has to have it in there, but I guess because it's up there and viewable to all and it's not coming directly from you. I don't know. Right. They'll keep changing their mind, but, uh, but just make sure you know what your own local regulations are. I don't know that anybody's paying attention to the videos. Um, I, I do know we get the occasional hand slapping from the MLS. Uh -huh. We upload a photo in the front of the house with the, with the for sale sign. Yeah. Um, somebody's looking at those, at least in CMR, uh -huh. CR MLS. I, I don't know that there's that many videos uploaded, to be honest with you, mm -hmm. um, on each individual listing. And to the degree that there are, I don't know what they're looking at. I mean, so well, you, know, you upload one that's got a yard sign, they say don't do it, so you, so you change it next time, big deal. With any video, you know, if you're waiting for somebody to come find it, it's not going to get that many views. It's going to get the views by you pushing it out there. And like I had mentioned when I you know, first started this program, a greater part of the value is, is in as a listing tool. And it's something that you can have an offer that your competition probably is not. But I would also go on YouTube and search. Search your town and put, you know, like your town, any town, real estate. And see what comes up. See who's got stuff up there and kind of scroll through and see what's there. Yeah. Uh, I know Podley Properties up in the, uh, alongside the foothills, uh, pretty much with every listing, every time the Asians take a listing, they have their in-house marketing department where they take They're a going video. in and creating a video. Go, yeah, but it's along with the music. The right. music you know, yeah, it's kind of like a little bit, you know, boring from Love Story or, or something like that. <laughs> you know, you're watching there. Okay. It's kind of like this. I'm tired, you know. But they, they do, with every listing they take, uh, it's part of their, you know, marketing tools. Okay. Just a note on music. Uh, like video list just gives you a little catalog. It's just basic music. Um, if you think that you can put up a famous song or something underneath your video, no. don't do it. Okay? Uh, YouTube will catch it automatically. They won't stop you from putting it up, but it'll give you a warning. And I'm telling you, whoever owns that copyright, they do searches and scans all the time through the video so they know immediately if it's published music. Um, and that can lead to much heftier fines than the MLS is going to give you for something. So mm -hmm. just be careful of that as well. Always be careful of copyrighted materials unless you have the rights or the permission to use it, and then you must source it. You must say in there courtesy of whoever. Yes? 
Um, I was noticing, I was thinking presentation is everything, and the woman who you demonstrated was wearing sunglasses. Mm -hmm. And as a prospective buyer, I would rather see her eyes, and I think that's mm -hmm. not the greatest presentation. Uh, okay, that, that, that's a good catch, and you're right. Uh, but given our training that we were out yeah. there, and the sun was right in her face, you know, typically, you know, if she were going to, that's why she went back that afternoon. She didn't like the way right, she looked either, she and, you know, she wanted to get comfortable with the process. But yes, your presentation is everything. And that's why, you know, when you're taking your, your video clips and everything, you want to be careful that you're holding your camera steady. I had mentioned about, you know, a tripod that you could get from Walmart uh, or Radio Shack. I think I only started to mention about, like, one of the uses is to be able to use it as a tripod. But I also like to use it if I fold it up and have it screwed into the bottom of my camera. I can hold the tripod like this, and that's going to make my camera much steadier. Because if I'm trying to point out features, you know, I, I could be going like this and not even know it, right? You want to avoid that Blair Witch Project? You want to have... <laughs> Trust me, I've seen a lot that are like, holy cow, what were they thinking? You know, as they're walking, you know, up and down through the room and heavy breathing, you know, and just everything. It's all right, no, we don't want that in the video clip. So just be mindful of what you're taking. If you are going to walk through like maybe a hallway or even through a room if that's what you choose to do. Just try and keep it as steady as possible. Try and keep yourself as, yourself as steady as possible. Most of today's digital cameras have image stabilization software built right in. So they're a whole lot better than, than the older ones. Uh, but you know what? You have the hardware in your digital cameras. Uh, a lot of people are starting to use smartphones for their pictures. I don't think they take as good a picture, especially as good a video as your digital camera is going to take. All right, so I mean, you can check out um, taking a scene with a digital camera versus your smartphone, but if you already have the digital camera for the photos, I strongly suggest using that for your videos. Okay? All right, well, thank you very much. I hope this was helpful. And I hope you guys see the and it looks like I get at least one more question. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, no, not a question. Just, just a comment. We have a good uh, audio, visual, and IT man, but you really have made this simple and uh, unintimidating to me now, at least. All right. So, well, that was, yeah. that was the goal. So there you go. All right. <laughs> Before, first of all, again, thanks, John. Really appreciate it. Do you have Wi Fi on that? Yes. Yes. Um, let, let me just say share a couple of things with you in just another maybe 10 minutes and we'll get everybody out of here. Um, what website do you want to? I want to go to. Um, we can do it on here. Or we, I don't, this doesn't matter. Which this one? isn't hooked up to the Wi Fi. Oh, okay. So. Well, let's, let's Wi Fi on this one. I want to go to YouTube. Um, if you haven't seen our YouTube channel, um, you need to take a look at it and you need to create your own. Okay, but I want to take you to our YouTube channel for two reasons. Now, again, my, our office focus is a little bit different than your focus specifically as an agent. But at the end of the day, we're, we're, trying to reach, we're trying to reach our client. We're trying to reach our customer. You guys are looking for buyers or sellers. Um, our sales managers are looking to communicate with you as our existing clients. You're, you're, you're our listing, so we need to communicate with you. If we're, you guys are looking for a future listing, we need to find new agents. So when, if you go to our YouTube channel, uh, am I on YouTube now? I'm okay. going to ch chime in here a little bit. Okay, uh, please, you guys, right. the, the YouTube channel format has been changed recently. It's now called, I believe, the One Channel. The old format was a lot more customization friendly for the average Joe. The new format is not. They've kind of restricted the ability to format your page on YouTube pretty significantly, unless you're a national brand. A lot of the national brands, they can customize it, you know, up and down the street, but the average Joe, small pages, they're very restricted. But the only thing you can customize is the top header image and then your, your little picture that's in the corner, which they actually force you to create a Google Plus account in order to change that picture, too. So it's a big push. They're trying to compete with Facebook. So this is one of their ways they're leveraging their assets to do so. But that you see the top bar there with the three cold banker images and then the little white CV? That's the extent that you can, you can customize your YouTube pages now. For the average Joe, anyway. Okay, um, who's been on our YouTube channel before? Okay, well, good. All right, good, good. Again, it used to look a little bit different. I kind of like the way it looked previously a little better than the way it looks today. We're kind of restricted, at least the way I can understand it, to these logos. But a couple of things I wanted to share with you. 
I use this all the time specifically for, for two reasons. Number one, I'm using it for recruiting. I got a brand new agent that comes into the office and I'm taking them and they're like, oh my God, you got these videos, this is really cool. And they're going back and taking a look at them. I'm using it for training purposes. This video is going to be on our YouTube channel. One of you, I guarantee you, Brian will get this thing posted, we'll send out an email, you guys will find it, we'll have 5, 10, which may not sound like a lot, but I'm happy with that. We'll have 5, 10, 15 views on this so within the next week. It'll be you guys that are going in and taking a look at it. Then um, a month from now, someone in the office is going to say, hey, or hey, I missed, I missed John's presentation today. I said, no big deal. You know, here's the link to go to the YouTube channel, take a look at it, or a new agent comes in, wants to talk about videos, so we send them to this all the time. One of the things that's been kind of frustrating for Brian and I, if you go to, I'm going to pull up Jack Pike's video. Before you move off that, you see that red button that says subscribe right, right below? Subscribe to us. If you click the subscribe button, we, you don't have to wait for Anna's email. You don't got to wait for anything. Right. All it does is it'll send you an alert saying, oh, Pioneer has posted a new video about and whatever. Is, am I, is this, and again, I don't know everything about this. Is this accurate? We only have 23 subscribers. Is that what that That's means? That's correct. Okay, so we should at least have 200 <laughs> subscribers. Yeah. At least every agent in this office should subscribe. Well, tell us that. I'm telling you now. But, well, but, but, okay, good point, but I got to tell you, if my voice starts to get a little frustrated in the next two minutes, it is, okay? Because we have been dragging you guys to the water trough for a long time, and you're not drinking, okay? Let me give you one example. This is Jack Pike. Um, Jack, can I search this here? Am I in the right spot, Brian? Oh, that's his brother. <laughs> you got it spelled wrong. Well, I know I did, but I, then I jumped back. I ended up on coldmaker.com or coldmaker works. Yeah, because I had that up there. I think I'm going to delete it. Right? <laughs> Okay, there we are. Okay, I want to search. Um, I want to search a video that we did for Jack. It helps if you spell his name right. Um, I think if Jack was here and if he was being honest, here it is. Jack would say he's terrified of this. Okay, Jack was terrified to do this. This is a minute and forty um, minute forty seconds. We did this for Jack for free. We will do it for you for free. I'm just going to leave the, the audio down. Um, you can kind of get an idea. Um, we did this. We can do this in any office. We have only had, so how many agents have actually taken advantage of this? Two. Okay, now some of you go, oh, I didn't know we could do this. Okay. If you didn't know we did this, now you know. But we've been beating this drum and to the content to the point where it's like, ah, gosh, I don't think we can beat the drum anymore. How much more easy can we make this? Now this is a lot more complex than doing the Videolicious video. This is, takes a little bit more skill than sitting down doing it yourself, although I think the whole point of John's presentation, which I hope everybody embraces, is it, does, it doesn't have to look this good, guys. This looks pretty good. Jack, now again, I don't, how many takes did it take Jack to do this? A thousand. Thousand <laughs> takes. Okay. And we quote, I mean literally, it was like he got three words out and boom. Yeah. Okay, let's do another one. And we wove it all together. You guys, and, and this video, this took me, man hours wise, between shooting and actually building the video, it took me probably about 10 hours to do. So Lance's offer for us to do this And, and we charge Jack nothing. Happy to do it for you guys, but I, I would suggest you guys do a couple of videos on your own before we do that, only because right. then you'll have an idea of what to expect first, rather than us having to redo it a few times. Right. So, now having said that, we're talking completely two different spectrums here. This is, if, if you want a nice professional background that you want to put on Cobalt Banker Works or whatever it happens to be, or, or CobaltBanker.com, let me show you another thing, which is going to be, I think hopefully will, will be eye-opening and also maybe a little troubling to you. Um, okay, here we are at our website. Um, I think we've got a pretty good showing from Cobina here, so let's, let's let, I'm a consumer. Okay, consumer. I want to find an agent. I want to find him in Covina. And the way our website is currently designed is our search and agent 
um, um, website links to excuse me there we go my word our agent search portal for the consumer links to globalbanker.com so from here I go to find a widow and I want to find someone in Covina this is going to redirect us to globalbanker.com and John has a video as as John was saying if you've got a video, you're on top. If you don't have a video, you're not. I don't see John here, but John's got a video. Who else has a video? Jose's got a video. See how far down we got to go. Um, Fernando's got a video, and that's it. How many agents do we have in Covina? Three. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, the CVS specials that they're on. Oh, okay, good. All right, just put that on the expense report for this trip. Okay. Um, how many, honestly, how many agents are in Covina? 40? 40 to 50. There are three agents. Three agents, and I don't see any of them in this room, because they're probably out shooting other videos. Um, or, again, maybe, maybe, maybe um, John and Jose and Fernando felt they didn't need this class because they already got it. Maybe they're already using Videolicious. Keep in mind, this is invitation here. So, here so it shows that you have 50. Oh, there we go. I'm sorry. We have 57 agents. We've got three with videos. Now, again, if you weren't listening to what John said, I'm a consumer. I go to globalbanker.com or just a second, or I go to our website and I say, please find me an agent in the Covina office. Guess who's going to be at t on the top all the time? Now you may say, well, that's not fair. <laughs> Tough. So what happens yeah. when everybody in the office does it? What's that? So what happens when everybody in then the office rotates. does it? Then it just rotates. Then it rotates. Now, this, it used to be, and you guys got to kind of remember this, it used to be that if you didn't have a, a picture or a profile page, then you were at the bottom, and then if you had your picture, you got to the top, you had a profile picture on the top. And then, it was a year or so ago, they did the video thing? Yeah. A year ago, they said, hey, we're trying to promote video. Consumers want to see video. Now, again, if you're like, I've never heard of this before, I didn't know this. I, okay, well, we're, I, I guess, to, to, to your point, we've been screaming it for so long, we stopped screaming it, and then we started talking about it a little bit softer, and then a little bit softer, and then we just kind of threw our hands up and said, uh, I'll, I'll give you an example. And, and again, I know we're all from different offices here. In Marina Valley office, we only meet once a month. Okay, we meet once a month. And every single month, how long have we been offering to shoot videos in okay. Marina Valley? About a year? Yeah. At the end of every sales meeting, we say, if you would like to shoot a video, and we will do for you what we just did for Jack for free, all you got to do is hang around at the end of the meeting. We've got the blue screen or the green screen over there. You go through, you go through it, and I, if I'm not mistaken, we have not had one agent want to shoot a video in, if Ryan was here, he could tell you, I don't know when, Anna, when's the last time we shot an agent video? I can't even remember. Can't even remember, and we've been doing it for at least a year. I want one. All right, well, now you want one. Mm -hmm. So, but, but, again, we're talking apples and oranges here. If you want the Jack Pike, as a matter of fact, I'm yeah. curious. Yeah, how, uh, how correct is that? Because Jack's not on there, you have Hector. Because Jack is not... Jack got the video, mm -hmm. we give it to you. Yes. What you do with it... Oh, he didn't upload we, it. Again, we can take you to the trough, but we can't make you drink it. And then once you drink it, now you've got to... I'm assuming Jack has that on his website. I'm assuming Jack has that on his YouTube channel. I'm assuming Jack has it here and there. What Jack has not done... He hasn't uploaded it. ...is not linked it to Colbaker.com. Oh, okay. Because Hector has one too, I believe. It's not linked it to Colbaker.com. These guys have, and I bet you a dollar that. The, and by the way, these videos were not done by us. I think I've seen it. I think I watched Jose shoot this video. I'm going to pull this up, and don't tell anybody I said this. I don't think this is a great video. I think this is probably a video that. Yeah, I, I did watch him shoot this video. I'm just. I'm not even going to play. Play <laughs> it. This video. <laughs> no, no. This video is not great. Okay. As a matter of fact, if it was me, I would not have that video. Up. I want something else. But that's the problem, is we're all looking for the perfect video. I'd much rather be Jose with a video that's less than great, but be at the top, 
and have a video that's a little flawed, a few ums, a few ahs, maybe a cough or a mm, or that embarrassing funky look at the end. I'd much <laughs> rather have that than what 54 of our other agents have. Nothing. Shoot the videos. And this video licious thing I think is fantastic. I mean it can't be any easier. Take a couple pictures, do the voiceover. If you don't like if you don't like it, have somebody else do the voiceover. You know? Have, have your, your spouse, have your kid, have somebody else do the voiceover, but do it. And then upload it and get it into by the way, I'm picking on Covina a little bit. Let's let's go to let's go back to where we were. Let's go to Marina Valley. Marina Valley is not going to be any different. And Rio Valley is kind of home office for me. The mothership. It's the mothership. It's the world headquarters. Are we ready? We've got, we've got, this guy doesn't even work. Right. And he's in the number one position in our office. His license is good. Two, three, four, five, six. Six. At the mothership. Six. Guys, we're beating it. This, this is why when, when Gary said, hey, we're going to do this thing on video, and John's going to come, which, by the way, you're, you're, you're Pacific, right? You're New Jersey. Yes. This guy came out from 3,000 miles to come out and do this. Wouldn't you want to? Okay. <laughs> this is a big deal. We are invested in it. And whether you think it's fair that Humble Bank or Corporate has decided that only the video people get, get the play, Google Bank of Corporate hasn't decided that, the consumer has decided that. You know, Google didn't spend a gazillion dollars buying YouTube because they thought it was kind of a fad. Okay? Facebook may be a fad and some of these other Twitter, I don't know, I don't get some of these things. I I don't think any if any who thinks Facebook's kinda of, okay? Okay. Does anybody feel that way about YouTube? I think everybody is just kind of just acknowledged YouTube's here, baby. Oh yeah, big time. YouTube's here to stay. YouTube's not going anywhere. You know, you miss something on TV, you don't need to cheat. I'm going to YouTube. Oh, we're training at home. Oh, we're training at YouTube. Okay. So there was one other thing on here I wanted to show you. I can't remember exactly what it was. I might be back on our, might be back specifically on our YouTube channel. Um, but at any rate, I would just, just embrace it. It's, it's, uh, you have a question? I cut you off here. Or did you no, 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 no. You answered it already regarding the uh, pictures, for instance, from uh, uh, Hector and. Okay. Well, yeah. this is the deal. Mm -hmm. um, if go back, watch our video again, watch John again, download the. Honestly, I've heard a lot about Video Delicious. I've never actually seen it demo. It's the first time I've seen a demo. I don't think it could be any easier than that, guys. It can't be any easier than that. Oh, I don't know the comments you were making about the lady with the sunglasses. Don't substitute. You know, what is, how is it, the good for the perfect or the perfect for whatever? You know, just just do it. Mm -hmm. no, it's not right. The lighting's not right. Oh, I forgot to take my sunglasses <laughs> off. Oh, or something but nothing. I, exactly. Something is so much better than nothing. And, and frankly, we've got 90% of our agents that have nothing. Which is why, when to go back to Jack's video, you know, I don't know what I did with it, but anyway, if you go back to where we have with Jack's video, we kind of made a decision that, okay, if you're embarrassed to have a less than fantastic video up, we will do a great one for you. And Chuck's okay. video is pretty darn good. I mean, that's something that all of us should be proud to have up there. So we've said we'll do it for you. To be honest with you, we haven't really had the agents embrace that. We haven't had to. I thought we'd have people lined up 10 deep and say, yeah, you're going to do that for me? Oh, um, sure. And that didn't happen. Okay, so I can forget that. Put up the glass, put up the video with the sunglasses and the audio sounds a little bit funky and it's a little embarrassing. I will tell you this. Who remembers their first listing presentation? Listen to you, live in front of a client. Is your listing presentation today a little bit better than the one you did? Oh yeah. The very first one? I don't throw up anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, to Diane's point, don't be afraid to throw up on your first video. <laughs> Throw up on your phone and show you. It's not going to be great. Now we get traffic. The next one will be better. The next one will be better. The next one will be better. And they're not static. Just because you took, you took the video. Okay, again, I picked on Jose a little bit. Again, we didn't even look at it. I've seen that video. It's better than nothing. Jose will do another one. I don't know when. Which is kind of the trap that we've fallen into now on our side. We have videos that we did a year ago that when I did the video, I told myself, I said, I'm going to do another one next week. Okay? I'm going to do a better one next week. Well, guess what? A year's gone by. But you know what? I'm glad for the last year 
But I had that first video up because otherwise I would have had time. Has anybody told Jose though? Um, I told Jose. Okay. Yeah. You know, well, if, I, if I can add something too, it's okay to have fun with your video too. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. I one agent. If you're not, it'll show. Yeah. yeah. Uh, as as an example, as an agent, you know, went through the whole property similar to you know what we described today, you know, introduced at the front of the property, and then you can hear her voice describing the backyard, and as the camera pans. It's her and the owner in the hot tub holding glasses of wine. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, but that's the reaction. Like, oh, wow, that's really cool. So it's okay to show Yeah. It's okay to show a life on the field. All right? Now, if you're particularly adventurous, you might want to invite even the, the seller to be in that video for a couple of seconds, talking about what made that home so special. Mm -hmm. You've seen our campaign for the last two years, you know, the whole We Believe campaign, Tom Selleck talking about the value of a home. There's a whole lot more to that house than the beds, baths, and everything that you're pointing out inside the video. If you can show, or even if the seller has some home movies, or you know, just showing something, or a backyard party, or something like that, that they wouldn't mind having in the video, this is where you can be creative. Get the first ones done the way we showed you now, just to be comfortable with it. But if you can, you know, be creative, have some fun with it. There may be some other material that you can add in it that's going to make the video a little bit more enjoyable, a little bit more personable, and maybe even a little bit more fun. You know, you might like that hot tub idea. Having filmed, having filmed quite a few videos, you guys, I can tell you that, especially if you've not done this before, the only way you're going to get to the point where you have a video that you would be even reasonably okay with showing a client is to do lots of them. Right. So, you know, the, the thing that I did for Jack, that's, that would have been a hundred times better, and it's already good, it would have been a hundred times better if he had practiced a few on his own, which is what I'm suggesting is take his advice, the stuff, tools that he's shown you, make the video as good as you can make it, then bring it to me and I'll make it shine. I, I've, um, I'm running a risk here because I don't. I'm not sure exactly what I'm sure. If you saw what I typed in, I just typed in "naked real estate ad," um, and then I typed in "best real estate video ever." I'm looking specifically for an ad, and it kind of gets back with what John was saying. Look at it. It's 92 Savoy Drive. Not, 92 Savoy is that the one? Yeah. Okay, but having said that, is that Christoph Chu? Not 90, 92, 92, 92 Savoy Drive. S A V Y. S A V O Y. Say the Alabama Savoy Drive. Savoy Drive. I should bring it up. It might not be on YouTube. I don't think so. Maybe it is this one. Okay, I'm not going to show this. I'm not going to show this video at the risk oh, of offending somebody. But I tell you what, John said, have some fun. Brian said, if you don't have fun, it's going to be noticed. There is an agent that did this video about a year now. This is a highly polished, highly produced video. They spent probably a few thousand dollars, professional actors. But the whole concept is, by the way, you don't even know when you watch this video, you don't even know this is a real estate ad until the very end. There's this, this absolutely Adonis looking naked guy, there's a beautiful <laughs> naked woman, she's laying on the couch, the guy's walking through, and you're kind of, what the heck? It's almost like a soft porn kind of thing going on. Okay, and then at the very end, you know, the guy, the doorbell rings, and the, the naked guy answers the door, the naked woman answers the door, and I think it's his realtor standing in front of him, or something like that. And I don't even remember what the, the, the tagline is, you know. So private you can walk around naked. So yeah. yeah, 92 <laughs> Savoy Drive. So private you'll walk around all day naked. Kind it's of a thing. $20 million dollar listing in Australia. Right. Yeah. Exactly. But the concept being is, then go out of the box. Do something crazy. Have some fun. Do the champagne. This may be. This may not be your style. I don't know. Come on. But have some fun with it. If you're just going to stand there, yeah. Number one, you're not going to like it. You're probably not going to do more than one. Okay. And the effectiveness of that. I'll look for one real quick. Yeah. I'll show another another example. But I just I love that. And again, I I think actually I think. Um, Shoes sent that out. Sent it out to a whole bunch of yes. people. Some people yeah. came back with that totally inappropriate, totally, we're going to get that. Right. Okay? Oh my gosh, it's very offensive. How dare you distribute that? Okay, well, there was three or four people that hated it. 
But there was a lot of people that thought it was probably probably pretty cool. And in fact, there was a lot of people who just wanted to watch it over and over and over. <laughs> you know? um, I don't know how many views that video had, but there's probably more than one. But I would just encourage you to, to experiment, you know, and, and, and put up, God forbid you put up a bad video. Big deal. There's millions of bad videos out there. So it looks like we'll do one more and then we'll 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 get you get you guys out of here because it's it's almost um, it's almost eleven. I wanted to see if it looks like it might have been deleted. Oh Robin Bob and Rana. This is what not to do. This is agents thought they were being cute and creating their own commercial. <laughs> but I love it. <laughs> it's disgusting. I have a feeling I'm gonna love it too. Oh, sorry. I got you muted. Let's pause a second. So then we can put the sound on. On the keyboard. Yeah, I think I killed you on the board there. Adjusted to your new home, Miss Buckfield. <laughs> <laughs>